What's up guys, it's Gil up here today with a quick video going through the um, some, some, some advice on um, how you might purchase stuff from the vendor this week. Um, it's always a tricky decision. So the vendor stuff is super expensive. Um, and so I just wanted to give you a bit of an overview of what you should and should not be purchasing. Uh, so if you like this video, don't, don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, you can expect to see these videos every week going forward. So uh, make sure you check back because I'll be doing them. So very quickly, let's kick off with the... Um, Classic M1A is the first one. So the, the downside of a classic, uh, the classic style weapons is that you lose the under barrel uh, mod slot, right? So the that, that mod slot gives you a lot of stability on your weapon. So the fact that you lose that is a big deal um, and it hurts this weapon a lot. Um, you get trained on this weapon, which is not a great talent for um, marksman rifles. You are not building crit for marksman rifles. You are building for headshot damage. So you're not gonna get a huge amount of benefit out of this. Predatory is really good solo play because it uh, keeps you nice and sustainable keeps you healed as particularly if you're solo farming in the dark zone but in groups you need to land the killing blow in order to proc this so you're going to proc this far less and i'd really recommend against it toxic look toxic is fun and it's really cool when it procs and the enemy just sort of stands there and you get to wail on them but overall it's not a particularly strong talent and i'd really um really avoid it so i wouldn't recommend getting this this m1a i think you can do far better i'd save your phoenix credits if i were you the only circumstance in which i would recommend you getting this weapon is if perhaps you are upgrading from the um, first wave M1A, which is going to get nerfed or fixed, I should say, in the upcoming 1.2 patch. Balanced is going to be changed and this weapon is going to be vastly, vastly less powerful. So uh, if you need a marksman rifle and you've got lots of Phoenix credits lying around, then hey, sure, great. It's got 204 gear score. It's got plenty of base damage. But otherwise, I'd really recommend avoiding it. It's not a great weapon. Now, the Police M4 is a really tricky one to sort of talk through. So um, we're going to go through that now in a little bit more, in, in, a, in a moment, in a bit more detail. So we'll skip that one for now. The next one, though, is this custom M87 um, MCS. It's got, uh, which is a shotgun. It's got vicious. It's got accurate. It's got adept. Now, if shotguns were good, I would say for sure. And there's going to be people in the comments below that are going to say that shotguns are fantastic. And that's totally fine. Shotguns definitely have their place. If you know how to use them, if you use them in a very particular way, um, if you are experienced with using them, um, if you are say PVPing, there's some really great uses for shotguns. But overall, they are not a good weapon right now. And I'm very certain they're going to receive some significant changes in 1.2 when they do the weapon pa uh, balancing pass. So um, for now, I would definitely pass on this weapon. The talents, you know, vicious, bonus crit, great, accurate, not as important at a, with a shotgun due to the fact that you're generally using it at very close range. Um, and for Finally, adept bonus crit when you use skills. I mean, look, it's there, but it's not going to change the world. So, not a great weapon. I'd probably recommend avoiding this one. I would quickly call out this pair of gloves that's available here. Um, it's got astute on it, which is first three bullets of your magazine have 10% higher chance for crit. That's fine. Um, it's not as good as Savage, which is 13% bonus crit to any target out of cover, but it's a decent enough talent. And uh, it also, this rolls with damage to elites, health on kill, crit hit damage, and pulse crit hit damage. So they're all really nice stats to have on a pair of gloves. You could do far worse with uh, than, than these gloves. So um, so that's it. But let's go downstairs very quickly and let's talk about this M, um, M4. It basically looks really good on paper. And that's why I want to talk about it in detail because you're probably thinking, oh, should I get this? Should I not? It's a really hard one. So we're going to break it down for you very quickly and tell you why you shouldn't be purchasing this. Um, so the first thing are the talents, right? Okay, let's go through them very quickly. Um, first of all, we have Vicious. Now, Vicious only works when you're at full health. And we all know that you're not at full health all the time in this game. And so you get zero benefit out of it when that's the case. So um, it's a nice to have. And if your playstyle is very careful, very backline, um, that's that's fine. But most of the time, you are not going to be getting the benefit out of this weapon that you might hope. So I'd probably recommend, um, you know, not picking up we're not aiming for that talent in general terms. Secondly, Ferocious. Now, Ferocious is an awesome, awesome talent if it is baked in at your number three slot. But the fact of the matter is the requirements to hit Ferocious are actually really high, especially on a 204 um, eye level weapon, right? Um, you need 2000 in each stat slot. Now, I could get that on my gear, but I have to seriously recalibrate things. And doing so would actually nerf me more than having this, you know, bonus 14% damage. So, if you are of a certain gear score, let's say you have 220 gear score plus at this point, you're probably going to be able to meet this requirement fairly easily because your gear will have enough base stats in it to, to accommodate that. But if you don't, 
right? And you're not gonna be able to hit that. Or if you can hit it, you're actually gonna be nerfing yourself as you do it. So I'd really recommend against aiming for Ferocious at this gear level because it's just too much in terms of the stat requirement. And finally, the ultimate sort of like deceptor in all of this prepared. Damage is increased by 13.5% when you're more than 14, uh, 40 meters from the target. Now that sounds awesome, right? Except for the fact that when you look at the actual um, range of this weapon, right, which you'll see because I've actually just bought it for demonstration purposes. Um, well, that's not it. I need to change weapons because it's the silly bugged stats. Uh, we see here that the range on the weapon it's actually 28 meters, okay? So there's 12 extra meters that we need to make up, right? And just so you know how long 40 meters is, where I am right now, looking down the line and shooting at this thing here, that's about 28 meters. And I know that because if I take a step back, right, I start getting some damage drop off, okay? So imagine another 12 meters on top of that, that's what you need to be shooting at to get benefit out of that talent. And we all know from shooting an assault rifle that that's just too far. Assault rifles are not useful at that distance because they have too much, um, you know, too much instability, okay? And that's the other thing I think we need to talk about as well. If I strip this weapon out and I show you it with no mods, you'll see, and if I don't correct for any of the aim and I just fire it, boom, yep, cool. Lots of recoil, spraying all over the place, huge amounts. And if I try and sort of shoot something in the head, you'll just see how difficult it is for me to do that, right? It's really, really tough for me to get that right. So in order to make this weapon work, I actually need tons of accuracy um, and stability and initial, sorry, and stability and horizontal stability. They're the secret stats that make an assault rifle work. And if we put them on right now, stability and horizontal stability, um, and I'll just put on this this um, weapon damage thing, right? So you see, it gets us some decent weapon, some recent decent damage, and I'm not even stacking accuracy on this thing. I only have it in one slot, but it's got some decent base damage on it, 168K with only 2,500 firearms. But you see now, if I try and fire the weapon, and again, I'm not trying to correct for the aim, much slower, much straighter, much easier, okay? Now, if I try and shoot something in the head and try and chain that, you can see I get a lot more stability out of it, okay? Cool, that works. And I'm running the Steady Hands Talent, which I'll show you quickly, is the one, whoops, is the one here, which uh, gives you more recoil reduction for 10 seconds after you take cover. And when I rock that and I start shooting, you can see it's fairly easy for me to land consistent headshots, okay? This is how you want to mod an M4. This is always how you want to mod an M4. It's about stability and horizontal stability and a little bit of accuracy in there as well. Um, and that means that you're not putting those stats into other things like headshot damage, crit hit chance, crit hit damage. So you make huge sacrifices in order to make this weapon work properly because of its inherent instability. And I think you need to be aware of that when you're sizing up this weapon as well. So overall, do I recommend this weapon? Look it's okay, you could do far worse. Again, if you have tons of Phoenix credits and you are using a, um, a weapon that is, you know, significantly lower gear score, then I would definitely look at it, okay? But for instance, as an example, I have my Vector, okay? Um, my Vector is, is uh, 163K DPS compared to this M4's 168, okay? My Vector has on it Destructive, which is armor damage, Vicious, 13% crit, and Ferocious baked into it. This is a really, really nice Vector, obviously. There is no way in hell I would use this M44 over this Vector, okay? It's just simply way better, even though it's much lower gear score. So don't just think that because a, gear, a weapon is higher gear score that it's inherently better, because it very often that is not the case. So that's it from me today, guys. Um, at the Dark Zone vendor, there's nothing worth buying except for the M1A uh, 204 blueprint, but you do need to be um, 70, or a sort of uh, Dark Zone rank 75 to get that. So if you are that rank, absolutely pick it up. It's amazing and just roll as many of them as you can because it's a fantastic weapon. Even post nerf, the M1A will still be extremely strong. So you could do far worse than um, picking up a, a, that blueprint and rolling a few of those. Um, but other than that, at the Dark Zone, not much else worth picking up. So don't worry too much about that. Um, guys, if you like this video and you found it useful, don't forget get to like and subscribe. I'll be doing these videos every week that cover, you know, not only should you buy the weapon, but also when you get it, how do you actually mod it properly so that you get the most out of it? Because it's not just a simple, hey, cool, I've got it. Um, now it's ready to go. You need to know what you're putting on it. And that's the sort of information I love to provide on this channel. Uh, so yeah, as I said, like and subscribe, stick around. Uh, love to have you. Thanks very much for watching. Take good care of yourselves and see you in the dark zone. Bye-bye.